Welcome to the Victory Education Lounge. I'm your host Maurice, and today we're diving into a crucial topic that affects not just individuals, but our entire society. The economic burden of insulin resistance. This is part 111 of our ongoing series on metabolic health. Before we begin, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Your engagement helps us reach more people with this vital information. Many people don't realize the enormous economic impact that insulin resistance has on our healthcare system, workforce, and overall economy. Whether you're managing insulin resistance, concerned about healthcare costs, or simply aiming to understand this complex issue, this video is for you. Today we'll explore the various ways insulin resistance affects our economy and discuss solutions, management strategies, and prevention methods that can help reduce this burden. Have you ever wondered how much insulin resistance costs our society? A seemingly simple health condition, insulin resistance, is quietly shaking the foundation of our economy. It's a silent but significant contributor to rising healthcare costs, productivity loss, and more. But what exactly is insulin resistance? It's a condition where the body's cells stop responding properly to insulin, leading to elevated blood sugar levels and potentially type 2 diabetes. But the implications extend far beyond individual health. The economic ripples are felt in the healthcare system, workforce, and the wider economy. It's a complex, multifaceted issue that we need to explore and understand. So let's delve into this intriguing subject, shedding light on the hidden economic impact of insulin resistance. It's time for us to raise awareness, spark discussions, and inspire actions that can alleviate this burden. Let's unravel the economic burden insulin resistance imposes on our society. Firstly, we have direct health care costs. These are the expenses that come directly from diagnosing, treating, and managing insulin resistance. Think of things like doctor's visits, medications, hospitalizations, and even surgeries. But what does that look like in numbers? Well, according to the American Diabetes Association, the estimated health care costs for managing diabetes and its complications which can be a direct result of insulin resistance, exceeded $295 billion in 2023. That's more than the GDP of some countries. So what can we do about these staggering costs? One effective approach is focusing on preventive care. This includes things like regular screenings for high blood sugar levels, dietary counseling, and physical activity programs. By catching insulin resistance early, we can manage it more effectively and potentially prevent its progression to full-blown diabetes. This not only improves health outcomes, but also reduces the need for expensive treatments down the line. Another strategy is implementing early screening programs. This means testing people who are at high risk of developing insulin resistance, even if they don't show any symptoms yet. The earlier we detect insulin resistance, the better we can manage it. For example, a large healthcare system implemented an early screening and prevention program for insulin resistance. This led to a reduction in diabetes-related hospitalizations by 30% over five years, saving millions in healthcare costs. Of course, these strategies require an initial investment. Training healthcare providers, setting up screening programs, and educating the public about insulin resistance all come with costs. However, when we look at the potential savings in the long run, it's clear that they can be worthwhile investments. Preventive care and early screening programs can be effective tools in reducing these costs. It's like the old saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Indeed, in the case of insulin resistance, that pound of cure can cost billions of dollars. So let's invest in that ounce of prevention and save not just money, but also lives. Insulin resistance doesn't just affect health. It also impacts productivity and workforce participation. This is a two-pronged issue affecting both individual productivity and the broader costs associated with disability. Firstly, let's talk about productivity loss. When people grapple with insulin resistance, they often deal with fatigue, blurred vision, and other side effects that can hamper their ability to work optimally. This can lead to increased absenteeism and reduced productivity. But it's not all doom and gloom. Businesses can counteract this by implementing workplace wellness programs and offering flexible work arrangements for medical appointments. This approach not only improves employee health, but also boosts productivity. Take, for instance, a tech firm that introduced a comprehensive wellness program focusing on metabolic health. They saw a 25% reduction in sick days and a 15% increase in overall productivity within just two years. 
Now, let's shift gears and discuss disability costs. Severe complications of insulin resistance can eventually lead to disability and early retirement. This represents a significant financial burden, both for the individual and society. However, strategies like enhanced disease management programs and vocational rehabilitation services can help people stay in the workforce longer. It requires a coordinated effort between the healthcare and employment sectors, but the results are worth it. Take the example of a state government that implemented a targeted disease management program for its employees with insulin resistance. They saw a 40% reduction in disability claims over three years. In sum, insulin resistance can take a toll on productivity and lead to significant disability costs. However, with thoughtful strategies like workplace wellness programs and enhanced disease management, we can help keep people healthier and in the workforce longer. After all, a healthy workforce is a productive workforce and that's good for everyone. The cost of managing insulin resistance doesn't stop at healthcare services. One of the major areas where we see a significant economic burden is in pharmaceutical expenses. Insulin resistance and its complications often require long-term, sometimes lifelong, medication for management. The cost of these medications can add up quickly, placing a heavy burden on individuals, healthcare systems, and insurance providers. One way to manage these costs is to promote lifestyle interventions as the first line of treatment. This approach emphasizes changes in diet, physical activity, and other behaviors to improve insulin sensitivity and control blood sugar levels. It can be a cost-effective alternative to medication, especially when implemented early in the disease process. However, it's important to note that lifestyle changes can be challenging to implement on a wide scale, requiring significant education and support. For example, a large insurance company prioritized coverage for lifestyle intervention programs offering resources for diet and exercise management to their beneficiaries. Over a two-year period, they saw a 20% reduction in diabetes medication costs. This shows how a focus on lifestyle changes can lead to significant savings. But what about the medications that are still necessary? Here, another strategy comes into play, negotiating better drug prices at a policy level. This can involve various tactics from bulk purchasing agreements to international reference pricing, all with the goal of getting a better deal on pharmaceuticals. This approach can lead to substantial cost reductions, but it requires robust negotiation skills and a willingness to challenge the status quo. A case in point is a coalition of healthcare providers who banded together to negotiate lower prices for insulin. Their collective bargaining power enabled them to secure a better deal reducing the cost of insulin for their patients and easing the financial burden on their systems. In conclusion, the pharmaceutical expenses associated with insulin resistance are substantial, but they are not insurmountable. Prioritizing lifestyle interventions and negotiating better drug prices can significantly reduce these expenses. Finally, we can't overlook the costs invested in seeking better treatments. Research and Development, or R&D, plays a pivotal role in our quest to combat insulin resistance and its complications. The drive to understand this condition, develop effective treatments and explore preventative measures all require substantial financial resources. The pharmaceutical industry, academic institutions and government agencies together pour billions into R&D annually. This funding fuels the discovery of new drugs, the creation of innovative devices and the conduction of clinical trials. While these investments are essential for progress, they also constitute a significant economic burden. So, how might we manage these hefty R&D costs? One strategy is to increase funding for prevention research. Currently, a large chunk of R&D budget goes towards finding treatments. Shifting the focus towards prevention could not only lead to a decrease in the number of people developing insulin resistance, but also reduce the long-term costs of managing the condition. Consider this example. A research institution decided to direct more of its resources towards studying lifestyle interventions for insulin resistance. Over the course of five years, they were able to identify several cost-effective prevention strategies, which, when implemented, could potentially save millions in future healthcare costs. Another strategy is to promote collaboration between research institutions. By sharing resources, knowledge and expertise, these institutions can accelerate the pace of discovery while also reducing costs. Here's an instance of this strategy in action. 
two major research universities decided to collaborate on their insulin resistance research. By pooling their resources and expertise, they were able to make significant strides in understanding the condition, all while saving an estimated 20% in research costs. Of course, these strategies come with their own challenges. Increasing prevention research funding requires a paradigm shift in the way we approach healthcare, and promoting collaboration requires overcoming competitive instincts and logistical hurdles. Yet, the potential benefits are substantial. In the long run, these strategies could translate into cost-effective solutions for insulin resistance, benefiting not just individual patients, but our society as a whole. Increasing prevention research funding and promoting collaboration could lead to cost-effective solutions. As we've seen, the economic burden of insulin resistance is substantial, but not insurmountable. It ripples through our healthcare system, our workplaces, and our economy at large. Yet, we're not powerless in its face. By focusing on prevention, early detection, and effective management, we can significantly reduce this burden. Remember, direct healthcare costs can be curtailed with preventive care and early screening. Productivity loss can be mitigated with wellness programs and flexible work arrangements. Disability costs can be reduced with disease management programs and vocational rehabilitation. Pharmaceutical expenses can be managed by promoting lifestyle interventions and negotiating better drug prices and research and development costs can be optimized by increasing funding for prevention research and promoting collaboration. The power lies in awareness and action. By understanding the economic implications of insulin resistance, we can implement strategies to combat it. Share this video, spread the word, and let's work together to lessen the economic burden of insulin resistance. Thank you for watching. Remember, addressing the economic burden of insulin resistance is not just about saving money. It's about improving the health and quality of life for millions of people. By taking a comprehensive approach to this issue, we can work towards a healthier, more prosperous society for all. Thank you for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Your experiences and ideas could contribute to solving this significant economic challenge. Disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as medical or financial advice. Any health-related decisions should be discussed with a licensed physician, and economic decisions should be made in consultation with qualified financial professionals.